Meyer lemon tree. I bought it last year and it was so much bigger than this, but I took it inside during the fall because it gets really cold here, colder than the nursery said it would, it would like. It lost every single solitary leaf. I mean, it was bald headed, just naked. So I brought it outside. I was at Lowe's, uh, I wanna say sometime in January. Yeah, sometime in January I was at Lowe's and I ran across this older gentleman and he began to talk to me about gardening. Gardeners know gardeners. And so we had this conversation about growing carrots. And I asked him, I said, you know, I have this lemon tree. First time trying to grow lemons. And it's not doing so great. It lost all of its leaves. It is just bald headed. Naked as a, a newborn baby. He said, well, the weather's pretty good. Take it outside. Take it out of the pot. If it's in a pot, rough the roots up a little bit, feed it, put it back in the pot, and let it sit outside. So I did that. And lo and behold, here it is. I was afraid. I, I thought that I was just going to lose this lemon tree. It was really, 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 really sad looking. But here it is just as beautiful now what I'm doing is I need to trim some of these new beautiful limbs because they're crossing everywhere I love the fact that it's bushing but they're crossing and you can't have limbs that cross over one another because as they start to harden off it's going to cause problems and it's going to affect the health of your tree so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to gently go in here and look and see where my limbs are crossing and once I find a limb I'm gonna cut it out I don't want to cut it out but I'm going to cut it out because I want this tree to be successful oh that's beautiful absolutely beautiful so I wanted to show you guys me doing that yeah this one's gonna have to go gonna have to go and I, I really don't know whether or not I can propagate these baby baby limbs here I'm gonna give it a try as a matter of fact let me get some a, a jar of water and let me get something to heal over these cuts I'm making and I'll be right back much of this you guys can see because I'm out here during a time I'm usually not outside. I had to run to the store right quick and pick up some stuff for my dog that I forgot to get yesterday. And I was up really, really early this morning. So I've been out in the garden for quite some time, just doing a few little odds and end jobs. And I'm going gingerly inside of this lemon tree because if you've never had an experience with a lemon tree before, lemons have thorns. And much like any other plant that has thorns, thorns are not very forgiving. They will grab a hold of you and don't let go. My arms have scratch marks all up and down them because of this lemon and I want to avoid having scratches today if I could possibly do that I want to avoid as many scratches as possible so I am going as gingerly as I can to try and minimize being all laid up now I tried grafting I want to say in February, in February, yes, I, I tried my hand at grafting for the first time. I was able to get some lemon cuttings from a family member's tree 
who didn't know what type of lemon they had. They they knew enough to know that it wasn't a Meyer lemon. They knew the, the lemons weren't kind of sweetish, but they weren't really altogether sure what kind of lemon tree it was. So I tried grafting off of that tree, and I don't believe that they took because, like I mentioned, the tree began to turn all the limbs began to turn brown and I I thought I lost those grafts so I haven't looked yet they the tips are brown but just because the tip of something is brown doesn't mean that it's brown all the way to the graft so I'm just gonna leave it alone I'm not gonna touch it it would still be too young yet to go fiddling around and trying to see whether or not it, it took. So I'm just going to leave it be. I think it's best that I just leave it. All right, I think I can turn this lemon now. I think I got this side pretty good. And I don't know if you can see it, but that electrical tape, this is where I tried my graft. And there's a thorn right there, so I'm just not going to touch that. Just not gonna. I'm actually gonna see if I can see if that branch that I grafted it on is alive. I'm just gonna see if I can scrape it just a little bit. See if there's any green. And y'all know I do not have my reading glasses on, so I may not be able to see anything. No, it looks like this limb has died. I don't see any green and I don't see the cambium layer at all. So yeah, it looks like it died. Man, that hurt my heart. That's okay. I'll try it again. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to find a different source because my family member has moved and so no more grafting opportunities from that tree but that is all right I'm probably gonna have to get some scissors oh no here we go Ugh. that's the one thing I do not like about electrical tape it is so sticky Blech. I like that it's sticky but when you get it on your fingers yeah no that's no fun no fun at all so I'm just peeling this tape away yeah, my graft didn't take. The the limb died. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, I'm so sad. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna keep telling myself that's okay. I'm just gonna trim that off, trim it back a little bit, because that's dead. All right, moving on. Moving on. And I made this little Lazy Susan that I'm using to twist my lemon tree around. And I'll show you guys that when I'm finished with this project. So let me finish this up because it's going to take me a little bit of time because I'm going kind of slow. Like I said, I do not want to get ate up by this, this lemon tree. I love her, but she can be really mean to me. So let me stop messing around. And then when I'm finished, I'll come back and show you guys the final project and the final result, as well as that little lazy Susan down there that I made. I'll be back. All right, she has gotten a haircut. I think she looks pretty good. Now, the reason why she has her party dress on is because of the squirrels. The squirrels don't like the party dress. Uh, ever since I put the tool on her, the squirrels haven't been digging in her pot anymore, so that's why she's got her party dress on. Now, let me scoot this chair back so you guys can see. These are the little trivets that I made for my pots. And if you look all the way down that way, I don't know if you can see, I've got a couple more down there. And all I did was I went to Lowe's, I got some uh, decking wood, treated decking wood. Uh, it's, it's cut to two pieces and I went to Harbor Freight I don't know if you guys I'm sorry my camera skills are garbage today and I got wheels from Harbor Freight and I put them 
four of them on for how much weight I thought it, it would be bearing. And I have a homemade trivet. Nothing more to it. So, yeah. Sorry about my camera skills, guys. That was pretty bad there for a second. But I just took some decking wood, some Harbor Freight wheels, and plant trivet. Nothing more than that. So, I am going to attempt to take these lemon clippings and make new lemon trees out of them. Now, I know some of them are probably way too... Too, too small, too short to even be a lemon, lemon tree, but I'm going to give it a try. What I do know about this process is that um, you don't need a lot of excess leaves because it takes too much energy for it to try to put down roots if it has too many leaves. So I'm going to cut these leaves. For some reason that one's curling, so he's got to go. And I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. I'm going to take it all the way down to where I chopped that leaf. I'm going to slightly scrape the cambium layer just a little bit. Just a little bit. And it's been sitting in water. They've been sitting in water down here. And I have some rooting hormone here. And I'm just gonna tap it in that rooting hormone. Tap off the excess. And I may have too many leaves on here. I, I don't know. This is all a God experiment. This is my compost that I have here. I'm just making a little hole, sticking it in the hole and firming it down just like that and that right there is trying to regrow a lemon tree from a lemon clipping so I'm gonna do the rest of these I just wanted to show you guys that one and if you have a lemon tree or if you can get a lemon tree in your in your area try to propagate it why not give it away sell it if you can See it promised. Mm -hmm. Here is the final product. These are my little lemon clippings. I've watered it in. I've topped it with vermiculite. I made sure that none of the leaves that I clipped were touching the soil. And I have five little bitty baby starts in here. So we'll see how they do. I'm going to take them inside and put, in, put them in my indoor greenhouse. But like I promised yesterday, I was going to start using some of the products that I bought in my shopping haul. And today I use the Stay Green Horticultural Vermiculite on the lemon clippings. So hopefully if these actually grow roots and take off for me, I will have five new baby Meyer lemon trees. I'm so excited. I showed you my composting lane and I had a big stack of compost on the ground right here. I've already cleaned that up and this is the soil bag that I recycled for my own homegrown compost. Now this bag is a two cubic foot soil bag and I have roughly one cubic feet of soil in this bag. Now I had more than one cubic feet in that 45 gallon trash can, but I started putting that compost on top of my garden earlier in the fall of last year as well as early spring. So a lot of it has already been spread out. You can see in this pot where I spread out my compost. Now, I showed you guys this in my very first video. This is my hibiscus, and I'm so excited. Look at the growth on that beautiful baby. She was cut down all the way last year, and I did not know that it was going to come back. I read that it was gonna come back, but I wasn't sure. This is my very first hibiscus. So I'm so excited to see that it's coming back, and there's another little bitty shoot coming up right there, 
it is doing magnificently it's just so pretty and I know I showed you all what it looks like but here it is again in the sunlight it's really bright outside right now uh, it's about I think 11 something uh, almost lunchtime and I came out kind of early early this morning I've been out here doing some prep and some cleanup and so I just wanted to show you guys my compost because I wanted to clean that compost up so I could use it a little bit later on when I come back for my video but that's what the majority of my pots look like I've dumped compost on the top now this is what my compost looks like can you guys see that it does have some wood chip in it let me go this way maybe if I there we go block the sun a little bit it does have some wood chip in it because I did have I do have wood chip on the ground here but that's okay that's just uh, bits and pieces that you would normally find in bags of soil bags of compost so I can always sieve that out I haven't sieved this yet but I just put it in the bag to get it off of the ground and I'm just gonna let it sit here one more day let it, let it air out let it dry a little bit more and then maybe I will sieve it maybe I'll sieve it when I need it I haven't decided yet but this is my homegrown kitchen waste compost so if you're not composting my question to you is why not I'm gonna take these buckets that I purchased yesterday from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna place holes in them most people place holes on the bottom because they want their buckets to drain completely out after they water I on the other hand I place a hole or two along the side not too far up from the bottom because I want to make as many pots as I can self-watering it's very hot where I live and this prevents me from having to water every single day and I want to give my plants uh, the very best opportunity they can to have as much water as they need when I'm unable to go ahead on and water them daily so with that being said I have the buckets I'm only going to do two and I'm going to plant them up in just a moment but I need to put a hole in them first I'm going to use this drill. I just picked the largest bit that I had. I don't even know the size of this bit because I don't have my reading glasses on and I can't read it to tell you what it is. But I just pulled the largest bit I had in the uh, toolbox. So I'm going to separate these buckets and I'm going to just eyeball it. So I'm going to basically place it about this high up on my bucket like half a thumbs length I don't I don't want it to be too much water sitting in here but I want it to be just enough now I'm not going to drill this going forward I'm gonna drill this going backward when you drill into pots like or buckets like this if you drill going backwards uh, it'll make that hole a little less jagged so at least that's my experience so I'm going to place this on the ground and I'm going to show you guys me drilling this hole. Now I know you can't see it right now, but you will. So let me turn the camera down so you guys can see it. There we go. And I do apologize for the noise. Like I did tell you guys, I live in an urban environment and there is always something going on. So can you guys see? I'm just going to try to put a hole. Okay, now what I did was I just kind of moved the drill bit around a little bit to make the hole a little bit bigger. That way it, it, it drains out. And I'm only going to put one hole for right now and if it looks like I, I need another hole then I'll put another one but I think this hole should be sufficient and I'm going to do the same thing on the other bucket and I'm just eyeballing it Want to put a hole in it holes right there and that way 
your pot, bucket, what have you, will have a little bit of a water reservoir. And that way your, your pot doesn't go thirsty at a time when you can't automatically get to it to feed it. So, and I'll show you the inside of the bucket. Can you guys see the inside of the bucket? I'll just show you like this. Here's a hole right here. I know you guys can't see it because my hand is in the way, but I'm just trying to show you the hole. There you go. And now we're gonna fill it up with some plant material, some organic material, and some homegrown compost. So let's go get that. I've reached the part of my day where I am now ready to plan up my finds from yesterday. So these are the little baskets I was telling you guys about. Now the little round core, coconut core type inserts, uh, they're not exactly what I needed, but it'll work just fine. The ones that I originally, that, that originally came with this were square, but these will do just fine for what I need it for. So I'm gonna place some of my homemade compost into the bottom of this and move it over closer to me. I'm just going to shovel some homemade compost in here. Hopefully I don't make too much of a mess. I've already put fertilizer and amended this soil already so it doesn't need it. The same amendments that I showed you guys yesterday, the blood meal, bone meal, uh, black cow, I put some plant, oh, what is it called, plant tone in it because that has mycorrhiza fungi in it. I put some worm castings and I do believe that's all I placed in my homemade compost besides coconut core for the moisture content so I'm just adding my soil filling it all the way up well not quite all the way but filling it up filling in the gaps now when you put your soil in you got to tamp it down because there's going to be air pockets and you don't want air pockets in your soil. I'm gonna firm it in just a little bit. Hope you guys are seeing that okay. I know my camera skills today have been pretty shoddy and I do apologize for that. But I'm not a professional. Now these are the freesia bulbs that I picked up from the Dollar Tree yesterday. And you know, I should have actually looked in these boxes because, and I'm, I opened them up earlier. When I opened up the boxes earlier, the bulbs didn't really look all that great. They really don't. They don't seem all that viable. I could kick myself for not actually going through those boxes of bulbs. But to be honest with you, I had to stand in line to get into the store. They were only allowing 25 people in the store at a time. These are gonna go in the recycle bin. They were only allowing 25 people in the store at a time. And when I got in there, when it was my turn, because I had to stand outside in a line, the people outside were doing really well. They were standing and giving each other space. But when you got inside, it's like people weren't behaving the way they should have. And I felt really uncomfortable with all the coughing and the, the close proximity. So I just hurried up and got out of there. So what I'm doing is I'm just planting three bulbs in this pot. And I'm just drilling down with my finger just to the second digit. Um, nothing too far and I'm gonna cover it up with soil just like so can you guys see that okay just covering it up with soil 
Now I'm going to top this off with some mulch. But I'm going to put it to the Moving side. Moving on to the next pot. I already have soil in it. And we're going to be putting in the gladiolus. Can you guys see that? Same situation with the freesia. I opened up these pots earlier when I was trying to prepare what I was going to do this afternoon for what I needed to plant. And these bulbs look a little bit better than the last. The last bulbs were extremely dry. These are firm. Um, I don't see any green tops, but they don't they don't seem like they're dead. But we shall see. We, all I can do is see. For well, what can you do for a dollar, right? Just be thankful. Be thankful. But I want to say I had maybe three out of the other six that I don't think they're gonna gonna grow. Now this bulb seems like it's actually germinating, which is exciting. So I'm gonna place it right there. This one seems like there's some germination. So I've got a couple here in this box <clears throat> that seem like they're germinating. So I'm just gonna go ahead on and again, down to the second digit, I'm just gonna plant it down deep. Well, that's not really down deep, but I'm gonna have to make that hole a little bit bigger since these bulbs are a little bit bigger than the last. But I don't wanna plant them down too far because I, I want them to be able to to germinate. I might have to reassess this here situation. There we go. Alrighty, let's try that again. <clears throat> I hope you guys are seeing this okay. I'm right-handed, so I know that probably my left hand might be in your way and I do apologize let me maybe shift my body a little bit maybe that'll help and I'm just sticking a sticking my finger making it making a hole and placing the bulb in the hole if I could just get it past my my glove things would work out <laughs> my glove is causing me some problems but I'm one of those gardeners and and this is different for everybody you know there are gardeners who don't use gloves and uh, there are gardeners who say that real gardeners don't use gloves but I'm I like to use gloves I don't like to have dirt and debris and everything else up under my nails even with gloves you still have dirt and debris oftentimes under your nails but you have less when you use gloves and that makes me feel comfortable and here's my thing this is this is my little takeaway for for everybody garden how it makes you feel don't think about or listen to anybody else's idea when it comes to how you should be doing your garden if you want to plant something that doesn't make any sense to anybody else but you plant it it's your garden if you want to have a color scheme that is bizarre and outrageous. Have that bizarre and outrageous color scheme because guess what? It's your garden. If you want to use gloves, use as many pair of gardening gloves you can get your hands on because it is your garden. Those are your hands. Do you, boo? Do you? So, the gladiolus have been planted. Like the freesia, I'm going to top this off with some mulch. Or you know what? I'm going to try something different. Hey, hey. Let's try some vermiculite, shall we? I did say I was going to use what I bought out of my haul yesterday. So let's try some vermiculite. Normally, I, I put wood chip mulch on top of my pots. But since I have this beautiful vermiculite, I'm going to just spread that on like so. And I hope you guys can see. And I'm sure I'm probably putting too much on because I'm heavy-handed. I do everything with a heavy hand. I don't know where that comes from, but that's my life. There we go. Just 
Just spreading that on there. Now, before I forget, I'm just going to place this on top of here because I will indeed forget what I put in this box, box in this pot. Because that's, that's how I do things. I tend to plant stuff and I go back and think I'm going to remember. And I don't. And so I end up surprised when stuff pops up. But it's always a good surprise. Good, good, good surprise. So I'm going to also put some vermiculite on top of this one. I hope you guys can see that. Can you see that? Yeah, you guys can see that. Here we go. And if I'm doing too much, let me know, guys. If I, some of you seasoned gardeners out there, if I'm doing too much with this, let me know. I'm just winging it. I don't know. My garden is a wing it garden. All right, so I'm gonna put these off to the side. Let me scrape this vermiculite into my pot because I do not want to throw away good product onto the ground. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. Now I also have a ton of these little water catcher plastic cheapo saucers and I put them under all of my pots to make sure that if I do have a pot like this that it does get a chance to absorb some water when it rains or when I water it that way it doesn't stay bone dry because these need a lot of water and if you're not watering these on a regular basis they will dry out so let me put these over here and then I will start on the red bucket get these out of the way all right now you saw me drill holes in my red buckets <clears throat> and on things like this I like to put a little bit of either wood chips or leaves in the bottom because sometimes when I use compost I'll come back and I'll find worms in my pots and in my buckets and that means that your soil is exactly the habitat that they love. So I put some food in there and this is going to break down. So I am going to take this vermiculite and I'm going to move it over here because I don't want to spill it and there's always a likelihood that that could be my reality. Now I have a little tote here that has my compost in it and I'm just going to fill up my bucket with my compost mixture. Same thing I did with the last two pots. I'm just going to fill this up. I hope this isn't too boring for you all. But there is somebody out there who's a very first time gardener. They've never planted anything. They're not quite sure what kind of soil to use. They don't know what amendments are. And the idea of sticking leaves in the bottom of the pot is foreign to them. And so I am here to help out everybody, but I'm definitely here to help out those because I have been there. There are times when I'm still there. If you watch this entire video, there was a couple of things I did today that I wasn't quite sure of, which was those lemon starts. So we're all learning. We're all learning at our own speed. I am not a novice gardener. I have been gardening for a long time, but I'm not a pro. I'm learning every single day. Okay, now I, what I'm doing is I'm putting the soil right up to that first lip. Now in this bucket, you can see a lip. Can you see a lip right here? There's a little lip right there. I'm putting soil right up to there and I'm going to give it a little shake. And the reason why I do that is because I want it to settle. I want those that soil to pack down a little bit. I don't want it to be so compacted that I can't put anything in it, but I want to have it compacted a little bit. Now you can see, hopefully, that it's actually dropped down past that lip and that's all fine and good. I expected that. That's why I gave it a shake. So I'm going to put some more soil in here because I want this pot to be right up to that lip.
There we go. That looks about good. And your soil level is going to fall down anyway. Over time, it's going to fall. Because remember, I have leaves in the bottom of this pot. And once the worms find it, because the worms always find the worm, the worm, the worms know where the food is, like the birds know where the food is. They know. They just know. All right, so I've got that in the pot. Take my gloves off because now it is time for, bam, the giant red mustard. I have not opened this. I just put it in a little Ziploc bag. I usually put my seeds in a little Ziploc bag once I open it because I don't want them to fall out and then get mixed up with something else or worse, I lose them. We spend hard-earned money on our seeds. The last thing we need is to lose them. So I put them in a little Ziploc bag or some kind of bag that I can close it off. So I'm just going to open up this packet of seed. It's a nice size little... Uh, a nice amount of seeds in there. They're not very big. I, I, I actually thought they would be a little bit bigger. Can you guys see that? I thought they would be a little bit bigger than that. But you know what? If you know what an actual mustard seed looks like, because I actually have some, I carry them in my purse because you have to have faith the size of a mustard seed. And I, I have, is that what these are? See, look at there. Look at there. See, I had my light came on, y'all. All right, I'm only gonna put two of these in this pot because I think they're gonna germinate, and I do believe these get really big. So I'm just gonna drop two in here. And from what I saw online, because they get really big, they're gonna need space, and I don't want to. Well, you know what? I'm gonna play, I'm gonna wing it. I'm gonna put four in here. I'm gonna put one in each corner, just in case those two don't germinate. And then what I can do is I can give some away. Or I can take them out, which is probably what I'm going to do, and pot them up in those other two red buckets or some other kind of bucket I have. Now, what I'm gonna do now is, because those seeds are so small, I'm not gonna cover this over with any more soil. I'm going to give this a good water, like I'm going to give the other um, bulbs a good water. And then those seeds are going to fall down into the soil and begin to germinate. So I'm not going to top this off. But what I am going to do is when I give it a good water, I'm going to put some vermiculite on it. So I'm going to take this same process and do it again in this bucket. But I'm not going to show you because that's redundant and you all don't want to see that. So let's go look at one last activity that I, I plan on doing in the garden tonight. And then that's it for me. I'm done for the garden. I have been in this garden since about 9 o'clock today. And it is 6.35. I took a couple of hours off to go in the house, get a little bite to eat, uh, do a craft inside the house, do a little straightening up, figure out what's for dinner, and watch two or three YouTube videos then I realized you know what I better finish this off because you guys are waiting for me to put out some content so here I am so I'm gonna put this aside and we're gonna go to the last activity of the day the garden has had my full and undivided attention today pretty much all day so you know what this is gonna be the end for me tonight I'll see you guys in another video happy gardening